Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for all our service men and women throughout the world and for those who have passed away in our community, especially Carl Evans, Grace Benway, and Ann Gebhardt. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. King. Present. Mr. Schuster. Present. Dr. Rothschild. Mr. McAndrew. Present. Mr. Smurl. Here. We have a proclamation. Um, Jim Malay, let's come up to the front, please. This is um, the Crusade chapter of the Order of the Malay. Whereas the city of Scranton supports ongoing efforts to engage young people in community, social events, workforce de de development, and charity, and whereas the city, the, whereas the Order of the Malay in character building organization of young men from 12 to 21 years of age, and whereas these young men are seeking to prepare themselves to become upstanding citizens and dependable leaders, and whereas Dimalay helps develop the traits, character, which have strengthened good men in all ages, and whereas the organization has carried out the aforementioned goals in 100 years through the program of civic service, social activity, athletic competition, and charitable projects. And whereas in Pennsylvania, Dimalay supports children's dyslexia centers, contributing proceeds from fundraising efforts to support its mission and improve the lives of youth. And whereas the members of the Crusade chapter in Scranton, PA, observed their centennial anniversary, 2023 and 2024, marks the 105th anniversary of the Order of Dimalay to exemplify all citizens their many activities and tender recognition to millions of senior Dimalays. Therefore, um, from P Mage, uh, P Mayor Page Cognetti and the City of Scranton declare March 26, 2024 to be De Malay Day and encourage our residents to celebrate these young men and the Order of De Malay. Ex <clears throat> express our appreciation of their fine example for their con contributions and welfare of the city community. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to say it's my pleasure to be here as the Deputy Technical Officer of Pennsylvania. 
Navy Malay for this region, northeastern Pennsylvania, is called Region G. The young man who received the proclamation is David R. Neal Jr., who is the past master counsel of Crusade Chapter. He just turned 18 years old and he served four terms as master counselor. And the reason he's wearing a gold collar, he is the highest ranking Navy Malay in northeastern Pennsylvania. He was appointed as the regional master counselor for this area. I was born in Scranton, and the music, they both play in Scranton. for a few minutes. Third order, 3A. Minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held February 21st, 2024. 3B, Minutes of the Non-Uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held February 21st, 2024. 3C, Agenda for the Non-Uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held March 20th, 2024. 3D, Minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held February 21st, 2024. 3E, Minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held February 21st, 2024. 3F, Correspondence received from the Department of Public Works regarding Rubicon update received March 19th, 2024. Are there any comments on any of the third order items? I have a quick one on 3A. So. Um, the past two meeting minutes that we received, uh, this one's from February and the one from January, um, there's still a vacancy on the Pension Commission. And I guess, you know, three names were requested and, and three names were provided. And I guess it's, there's been a vacancy for maybe at least a year. So, um, Solicitor Gobride, could you please send a letter over to administration and ask, you know, what the status is of this? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, Thank you, Mr. McAndrew. Anyone else? If not, received and filed. Um, at this time, I'd like to congratulate uh, Jessica Rothschild and, and Bridget McIntyre on the birth of their child, Callum James. And um, Jessica will be back next week. Does any council members have any announcements at this week, at this time? I have a quick one. I just want to wish everyone a blessed and safe Easter season. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. I, I guess I might as well go with both of those. Have a, have a happy Easter, and also congratulations to Jessica on the birth of her son. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to congratulate uh, Jessica and Bridget on the birth of their baby boy on Thursday. 
Um, <clears throat> hope everyone is healthy and happy, and we look forward to her return next week. Um, <clears throat> I do want to thank everyone who came out on Saturday evening for the fundraiser at the Waldorf to support uh, Detective Kyle Gilmartin. It was a great turnout, and uh, uh, it was great to see Detective Gilmartin. It's the first time I had the opportunity to meet with them since uh, that terrible, horrific uh, attack uh, on his life. So uh, that's all I have at this time. Thank you, Mr. King. Fourth order, citizen participation. First on our list, Joan Hodawanis. <coughs> Joan Hodawanis, Scranton. Uh, I assume Dr. Rothschild's probably watching this on TV or should be watching it later on. But uh, congratulations on the birth of your little boy. And uh, when you come back uh, next week, please bring lots of pictures and be prepared to stay late. Um, I have an interesting uh, invitation to uh, the people who live downtown Scranton. The Scranton Public Library is going to host a solar eclipse event on April 8th, which is a Monday. The event will start at 2 p.m. Uh, they're going to have a live feed, uh, which they'll have a large TV screen in the Henkelman room. The live feed will be coming from NASA. And they also have solar eclipse glasses. So between 2 and 3 p.m., you'll be able to watch it on the large screen and also go outside, assuming that it's not cloudy and raining, uh, and be able to watch the eclipse itself. So. There are, you have to uh, uh, register for this event, just call the library, 348-3000, and press uh, number five for the option to get the reference librarian and get yourself registered. Right now, there are about uh, 20 solar eclipse glasses left, so I registered, and hopefully, a lot of the people who live downtown, especially the elderly retirees, all you have to do is walk on over and have a good time, and it should be very interesting. I don't think most of us who are, you know, septuagenarians and octogenarians will be around to see the next one, so yeah, might as well come on down. Um, again, once again, the union contracts are not on the city's website. Firefighters contract, uh, 358 days old, it's coming up on its first year anniversary. Police is 242 days old. Love to see what's uh, inside those contracts since the taxpayer is funding the, the salaries and other benefits. Um, Remember the RFP for financial forecasting where we were looking for uh, somebody to come in and do some long-range planning for us? Uh, is the administration getting ready to send any names down or companies for that RFP? Yeah, I, I believe they're down to two. So okay, we should see something so they're getting soon. close. And also remember the $36.2 million bond that we had PFM in here uh, in a caucus briefing us on that. And they were waiting for um, an interest rate, which they assumed would be decided by the middle of March. Well, now it's March 26. Do we know what kind of interest rate we're going to get, vice the old 5% interest rate? So, Ms. Hodawanitz, I, I asked that question last week, and we did get an answer. And it was a very simple answer, which I'm happy about, 3.27%. Well, that's much better than 5 yeah, you know, hey, any savings, do you know how much that translates into money-wise? At this point, no. I just, okay. I just received these answers a few minutes ago. Well, we'll figure it out, but that's good news. Um, how's the 2023 audit going? Turning along? It's going along. Are they, they have they have a good working relationship with uh, the parking authority and the sewer authority to get those audits in? Uh, there's a financial meeting tomorrow afternoon, so we'll know better, better for next week for you. Okay, good. And um, I, too, wish everyone a safe and uh, healthy uh, Easter week and Holy Week this week, and I'll see you all next week. And Jessica, don't forget to bring your pictures. Thank you. Norma Jeffries.
Good evening, Council. Norma Jeffries, Scranton resident. And I just wanted to start tonight by um, congratulating our students from the Scranton, the basketball teams. I'm a basketball lover. I like uh, seeing the high school uh, play basketball. So I enjoyed watching them, the boys and the girls, as they advanced through the ranks of uh, playing basketball. So kudos to you guys out there. And for you that are seniors, you know, this probably was a great year for you. So um, I hope you enjoy, uh, you enjoy the um, run that you had with basketball and as you move on to higher things later. So congratulations. I also wanted to mention and read about um, a fish fry that's going to be held at um, the Shiloh Baptist Church. And um, if I could just read this. It's their annual Good Friday fish fry at Shiloh Baptist Church at 1936 Wayne Avenue in Scranton, Pennsylvania. It'll be March 29th from 12 to 5 or until they're sold out. It's $15 per meal. Take out or eat in. And you can call and place an order, and that telephone number is 570-347-3718. And that's to support the um, Shiloh Baptist Church there in um, North Scranton. The other thing I wanted to talk about tonight was um, I was away for a few um, days, and when I'm away, I do keep my ask my newspaper guy to deliver my papers when they get when I get back, which he did. And usually there's not too much in it. I'm sort of disappointed in how the newspapers are going now. But something I, uh, caught my interest, and I thought, wow, this is really terrific. And that was the article that was written about the traffic lights that are going to be installed within the city of Scranton. And it seems that there's three locations that they're zeroing in on in uh, Southside. I think it's their all sites, Southside. And I, I thought I said, as I read the article, it took years for that those traffic um, lights project to come to fruition. So I'm thinking, is that what it's going to take with the street signs? Years and years and years. I've been talking about the street signs for five years, six years. So as I read this article, I thought it would have been great if they could have worked together. And I know this is a PINDOT project, so it's not a, a city project. It's a PINDOT project. But they talked about the arms that hang out over traffic. And there's some other traffic um, lights don't have that arm, and they sort of wave in the breeze. So they're going to be replaced, and the arms are going to be put there. And I thought it would have been great if they worked with the city of Scranton, and as they have that equipment, to put up the traffic, um, the street signs as they're doing it. So what's the sense of putting up great, big, wonderful um, traffic lights, and you don't know where you are? I have had people from um, West Side text me and tell me that there were some street signs put up in West Side, but they're very, very small, that they're not the regular, it didn't seem like they were the regulated um, street signs. So I haven't gotten out there yet, but I will be driving around as I usually do and make a list of those that, that appear to be updated and new uh, street signs. So my thought is, again, as to why we couldn't um, partner with the PennDOT to get our street signs up as they put up the new traffic um, lights. That's all. And I do wish everyone as well a happy Easter and um, whatever you're, you know, if you're going out for the Easter egg hunts and enjoy. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Norma. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Um, the first thing I have here is that, you know, walking up to Council today, I walked by a law office with a condemn sticker on it. You know, as you wander through the city, it seems like inspectors are just walking up and putting condemn stickers on buildings. Now, Council was going to look into the training of, um, they sent a letter to somebody about inspectors um, condemning homes when they didn't pass the test and they weren't qualified to do condemnations. I don't know whatever happened to that, but you know, we really need a real change of direction in our city. I mean, 
I don't know if it's ever going to happen. You know, we just had a discussion about street signs. Chris, that was Chris Doherty's great plan. He, he took down street signs that were here for decades that everybody could read and put up those plastic signs that fade because I guess when you're using somebody else's grant money, it really doesn't matter what you do. And no matter where you put those signs, they fade in the sun. But the street signs that were here when I was a child never faded, and they were always could be red. So we took something that weathered quite well in the city, and since we could throw grant money at something, I guess that was a better plan, because we could, I guess, probably support political supporters of the Democratic Party in the city by accomplishing that task and, you know, making the situation just much worse. And as, as we look at this city, our city needs some real leadership change. I mean, I haven't heard anything from council that gives me any idea that they have any concern for anything that's going on in licensing and inspections. And I'm just waiting for Judge Farrell to set my hearing up. I'm going to probably invite the council members to come so that you know, they can maybe explain to the court why they haven't intervened because, Mr. Smirrell, you know, you are right. You are a legislative body. And all the damage that's ever been done to this city has been done right here in this chamber. You redid the quality of life and your signatures are on it, but there was never any protection for the residents. Ron Elman came here last week and spoke about how he got a quality of life ticket again because they thought his window was a door. I mean, and when you look at the abuse that's taking place, I mean, I've never seen a group of alleged leaders duck and hide as much as this council does. I think the residents of our city deserve a lot more. And I think that it just proves the fact that, you know, you can elect anybody, but will they really do their job? And will they show concern for the citizens? Because in America, the citizens are their sovereigns. Elected officials are not sovereign, but the, but the citizens are. We're the supposed to be served by you. And we can't even get you to speak words. You just sit there, and then you want to respond at the end of the meeting instead of having a dialogue, not just with me, but with everyone. And when we look at where our city is, I mean, you know, you just you have to see that over my lifetime, the population has seriously dropped. We spent a lot of money, but none of it went where it had to go. It went to wherever, you know, the council members and the mayor divvy up the, the, the grant money and determine where it's going, but does it ever go to where it really needs to go? And the residents need to ask, how much longer we can, can we play these corrupt games with alleged public money? because this money isn't free. People either across the country paid taxes on it or the residents themselves paid tax, but we haven't had any relief from the 2.4% wage tax that the city levies on people. And you know, you wonder what's going on with our, with our country when you have homeless encampments around every city and every population center in the country and all the jobs are in China and Mexico. And yet the people we elect to represent us, they put on cheap suits and they get elected and nothing happens for the people. And it's not a cheap shot at the council. You must have ran with an idea and why you, the legislature, can't pass laws and protect the citizen Why you protect the city. That's a different question because I don't understand in the quality of life why there wasn't sign of some kind of protections for the residents like Mr. Elman. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner. Last week when I was here, I talked about registering my rental property, and the woman who registered me asked uh, if I live there. I said, yes, I do. And she said, who lives on the other side? I said, my daughter. And she said, well, if she moves, you have to pay a fee. And I disagreed, but I didn't get in an argument with her. And I'm going to read something from the ordinance right here, because I think as long as I live there, I don't have to pay a fee. It says, rental units occupied by immediate family will continue to be exempt from fees, but must be licensed. 
Now, Mr. Smill, could you ask Attorney Gilbride what, if he, he thinks I'm correct or not? <coughs> correct in, in what? I think right. as long as I live there, it, I don't have to pay a fee. As long as you live there, no, you, you shouldn't have to pay a fee while you live there. Well, let's this rent person out register someone, my property said if my daughter moved, then I have to pay a fee. If your daughter moves and someone else moves in? Yes. Into that apartment? Yes. Then you would have to pay a fee for that apartment. That's not the way I read this here. Well, that's the way I understand it. Um, Attorney Gilbride, is that uh, the way we're reading it? That's my understanding as well. Thank you. Do you know what section that is, Mr. Spimmer? What's that? Do you know what section of the ordinance that's in, Mr. Spimmer? No. No, it's just a, it was in the letter I got. Okay, because yeah, I have the immediate family exemption um, from the question you asked last week. Residential resident units occupied by immediate family members of the owner's family shall be exempt from paying the rental license fee or individual regular inspection fee. The ex exception only applies if not more than two unrelated individuals in addition to the immediate members of the own family occupied the, res the re residential rental unit at any given time. The code official sa shall have the authority to determine whether this exemption applies in any given case. So yourself and your daughter are fine. Now, did you have an, you didn't have an, it didn't reference another? No, if she another, moves out, then I would have to pay a fee. Let me continue to look. Yeah. Right. Okay, whatever. Uh, next thing. Yes. It's on the paper today where the Pennsylvania American Water was unaware that they polluted Roaring Brook and the Lackawanna River. I think that's a lie. How could they not know that all that sediment got into the rivers? It's, it's unbelievable. And all they got was a few citations for DEP. That's like a slap on the wrist. They should have been fined a million dollars for what they did. It took years to clean up the Lackawanna River. And uh, just in a matter of days, maybe, they, American Water polluted it again. They can't even stock trout in there this year because of what they did. And I thought, Mayor Water Company gets away with murder. Uh, lastly, I know a lot of people have been talking about the homeless situation. And uh, coming down the McDade Expressway, getting off the uh, Providence Road exit, going towards Redner's, if anybody's familiar with that, about 100, 150 feet from the red light where Redner's is on the right-hand side, looks like there was a homeless camp there. And now it's just a bunch of garbage. You can't miss it. It's all over the place. There's garbage everywhere. So uh, I don't know if, PP, if DPW could uh, get over there and see if they can clean that up, because it's an eyesore. That's before you get to Redner's on the right-hand side, before the traffic light. Listen, you can't miss it. Going down towards Providence Road. Uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Margavage. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. I think I followed the tallest person in here last, but um, what he was talking about with that, I just want to bring your attention to the definition, the definition section uh, for the residential rental unit. Um, it does say residential rental unit shall not include any, it says a dwelling unit in which the landlord resides with one or more tenants. I don't know if that means inside your own building or your unit yourself, or if that's the building because it says the dwelling. So I think that may um, make it exempt. But, um, but anyway, about my issue about the rental registration, has anyone got an answer yet for the years that they are enforcing? No. No? Okay. Um, I, I have tried to reach out to Eileen Cipriani. Um, she did have Robin Salimba email me all my uh, statements, but that didn't really help me. Um, so hopefully someone gets back to me. Um, I guess my question is, if, if we do make a, a time frame of 2023 up, what are we going to do about the people that maybe sold their place? Um, or or to, if we go 2020 up, what are we going to do about the homeowners that sold their place in 22? How are we going to collect off them if they no longer own the building? So I don't know how that's going to work out. But um, uh, of course, we all saw the news today about what happened to the OEC director. I'm not going to really comment about her charges, because they're only charges. 
but I was upset that she was still in this position after she was known to not have a license and continued to drive the vehicle for the city. Um, I know um, Mr. Smurl, last week um, when uh, somebody mentioned something about Mr. Edsel, his shop, uh, that was a guy who had the detail shop that said he was shut down by zoning. Um, I know you, you said if you don't have any factual proof, and I guess my question is, if you did have factual proof, would you, would you act on that against Mr. Oleski? That is not my job. That belongs to licensing and inspection. Well, you can't ask him to act on his own position, though. Pardon me? You, said you, you can't ask, you know, if someone brought an uh, uh, allegation against that department, you can't expect them to investigate their own department. Well, we are meeting with the uh, administration about licensing and inspection probably in a week or so, so w I'll hold my comment back until then. Okay. Um, I mean, even my own situation, I know it was many years ago, but is anyone confused about what Mr. Oleski took away from me 13 years ago? Not only the money, but the time for my family, because I had to work another job to try to make up what he did. Anyone concerned about his, because I, I could prove that case but no one ever asked me to give him the documents. Anyone concerned about his past behavior? Or is that not relevant today? Okay, well, um, so I guess we'll move on to then the, uh, the text message. Um, the text message was sent from one code enforcement official to another. Um, I did remove all the names that were not members or uh, employees of the city of Scranton and I also did cut out one one vulgar word but um, I'll read it first I have enough time so it says uh, this is from Evan Harbert to Kristen Chiswick and it says so how about this I just saw and I wrote Scranton resident number one Crystal who was another former code enforcement official Crystal gave him a stop work order at one of his rental properties for trying to fix broken stairs, which is the proper thing to do. Scranton resident one talked to Tom about it. Tom just told him to do the stairs on the weekend. And of course, Scranton resident number two pulls the permit for him via recommendation. That's blanked up. And the other person wrote what? And then, and then Evan wrote back, yes, uh, yes, yeah, I was shocked as well. I mean, this, this is the text message. And this is recent. My, my allegation with Mr. Lesky was 13 years ago. Yeah, I just wonder when are we going to not let this person continue to do what he's doing? Um, I know I spoke to uh, two other members um, about, um, or maybe three other, about when I went to go purchase a house and I had to speak to Mr. Oleski and I was told that the lead abatement was done, the asbestos abatement is done, that house is as good as demolished. That house still stands today. Um, I would have liked to purchase that house back in the day, but I, like I said, it's either uh, a lot of incompetence or it's just, um, or just, just corruption. Either way, it's not good, but I don't believe, I believe he gave me bad information on purpose, and that was, that was many years ago as well. Um, I still don't have my license um, to be told I need a letter of recommendation. It's kind of crazy when I've been on my own forever, but uh, obviously we'll let Dr. Rothschild heal and get back, and maybe she could address that, so. Thank you. All right, thank you. Aaron Lee. I'm sorry, I guess I was daydreaming. I wasn't going to come tonight. No particular reason, but again, this newspaper printed a letter from this Sadati of his hating anti Israel, anti Jewish, racist garbage that I, I can't comprehend why a vehicle like this newspaper again and again and again allows s such evil to be in print. 
You know, nowhere in his past letters has, has he ever asked for acceptance of, of Gaza, donations, or food to send to Gaza, food packages, just continual evil hatred of Israel and the desire to overthrow it. And this is Chris Kelly's close friend that he just bragged about in his article. I think both of them could just climb under the rock they came from. And about my door, there's no doorknob. It's, it doesn't even look like a door. I don't, it's a window. I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I just sort of accepted that this city could use a code enforcement and a traffic bureau. Maybe our next mayor would do something ab about it. I noticed this is something weird in the, I think Saturday's paper, they print state liens. There's a lien for Juice Automotive at 2110 North by my house, North Main. That's a complete residential neighborhood. If we had some kind of code enforcement, why would uh, this be a business address? You know, this city just, I have a friend in Birmingham that watches this once in a while. <laughs> he says, this is almost like entertainment for him. This is supposed to be a business. Our mayor should come every once in a while and sit here and listen to the comments and suggestions people have. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, last week, I was in the Abingtons. We buy some dog food up, cat food up there. And a lady came over and told me, our mayor lives up there. I said, I thought she lived, well, I knew where she lived, off of Main Street, back in the, the, the houses. She said, no, they have a house up there. Is there any truth in that? I'm not trying to cause a problem, but she, she, she was adamant about it. You know, there's, there's, this city's got waivers for half the people working here. If they want to live someplace else, they should have to pay a, a high tax like we do. My taxes, I got them a couple of weeks ago like everybody else, and they're just getting outrageous. Th over three times what it is when I bought my house. And when Jack Liptie was in my neighborhood, it was a prime neighborhood like Nayog. Now look, look what's been allowed to happen to our city. I got businesses a block from my house, cars on the sidewalk. Yesterday I was behind a school bus. The little kids, I was four or five cars behind it on the 2100 block. The little kids were in the street because of a big truck parked with all four wheels and the ground was muddy. Nobody seems to care about the children or the future of this city. They're the future of this city and they're walking in the street where cars are going 70, 80 miles an hour 24 seven. I wish you, like I said last week, I wish the people would start thinking about some qualified new people for our administration and mayor. Thank you. Kristen Sizik. Good evening, Council. My name is Kristen Sizik, and I am a pre previous employee of the City of Scranton Code Enforcement. I am also the author of the seven-page resignation that you have all received, as well as it has been 
discussed here at Council numerous times, I am here tonight to speak on my behalf. Before deciding upon resigning, I reached out to numerous entities within the city of Scranton to try and get some help. With no surprise, I did not receive anything back from anyone. I was trying to report the misconduct that I know was going on within the building. I also reached out to the people seated before me in August of 2023. Again, nothing was done and I heard nothing, except for Mr. Voldenberg when I followed up with him, who verified with me that all members of the council received my email. When I went to the HR director to give the same report, instead of looking into the misconduct I was reporting, I was harassed and was then painted as a complainer via email by the HR director. Her harassment and constant emails and closed door meetings within her office and just unwanted contact altogether continued up to three weeks after I had already quit and it did not stop until I advised her I was going to the police if she did not stop. She questioned me about a 20 minute time slot on my timesheet for November 14th, 2023 because an individual who I already reported having problems with, which my desk had to be moved because of, stated they saw me at my house during that time. Meanwhile, this same individual was not in his section of town that he was covering and that was okay. I had a disciplinary hearing on December 4th, 2023. No write-ups or discipline leading up to this meeting as a matter of fact, there was nothing in my file at all. Funny thing is, this occurred after I reported the misconduct that is going on within the city. A target was placed on my back and the work environment became very hostile and toxic. I reached out to the mayor to try to schedule a sit down meeting with her and I was told by our very own mayor via text message that I should take my problems up with my union representative instead of her also looking into the misconduct I was reporting, even though the misconduct was from her administration. The former OEC director was praised and protected and I was told what a great person she is after making reports about her as well. Meanwhile, as it became public knowledge today, she is being charged with four felony counts of crimes she committed while being a public figure in this very city. She, on numerous occasions, pulled me into meetings and threatened my job and painted me as the problem. And now it's clear that she was just trying to cover up her own faults. She knew I was taking my complaints to outside agencies such as the DA's office and as well as the AG's office and did not, and did her best to try and stop it knowing what she herself was doing. During my almost two years employed by the city, I was painted as the problem. I was told that I am a frequent flyer in the HR office and none of my complaints are warranted. Numerous HR meetings to threaten me and my job just to, con to, just to continue to allow the misconduct and illegal activity to continue. They wanted me to shut my mouth to protect themselves. This council needs to finally open their eyes and see the issues that are truly happening inside these very walls. This very council put their trust into Miss Andy Apton and, and look where that got you. Another story in the paper. You should be so proud, you should be so proud. Individuals come up here week after week after week and advise you of the situations that have occurred and that are currently occurring and you turn a blind eye. The news report today should make you go back and read my resignation and maybe take the information provided about the other individuals and do something about it. This administration is placing blame on the people trying to make good and protecting those who are in the wrong. Open your eyes and for the sake of the taxpayers of the city, do the right thing and fix it. That's all for the silent sheet. Anybody else? Anybody else want to address council? <laughs> Tom Coin Manuka. So we have Easter, and we have a temple of gold, a sacrosanct walking trail of gold. So in the spirit of the holiday season, we eject the homeless and the unclean because a walking trail is a treasure that might bring us 30 pieces of silver. In the spirit of the, of the, spirit of the season, we have gone from my brother's keeper 
to my brother's kicker. How disappointing and how very unchristian. Now off to other issues. There's a lot of them to unpack today. We supposedly have a committee for the homeless that was announced in here. How many times have they met? Who comprises it? And are there any min min minutes for that meeting? We heard that it exists out there, but we have absolutely no website, public exposure, anything set up for it to say that, ex that it exists at all, other than knowing that the police put do not trespass for the homeless on the path, on the walking trail. Can we get some information of who's on that committee and what it actually entails and when they meet? I will send that request to Tom. Thank you. Well, we've been talking about corruption in City Hall. We've been talking about local government corruption. We've been talking about the bodies that shield them. We have a former mayor arrested and jailed. We have an OCD director, an OECD director, who not only lists the city cases has been prosecuted and the city has lost on cases for malicious enforcement of the codes, but we have him making contrary statements in affidavits under oath to the Office of Open Records. One saying that documents can't be released because of security issues, and then a second that says no documents exist to be released. Both of them are under affidavit. One of them is a lie. It's amazing that the documents turned up afterwards, after the second one where he said they don't exist. But that's okay, because lying under oath is something that's ethically accepted here in the city of Scranton. We have a park director when it was installed properly, and then on insurance he would move here and he would get lifeguard certification. He did neither and was granted a waiver of residency after a six month period when it says on the moment of the six month the employee is terminated by the city charter. But we don't pay attention to the city charter. Then we have an executive session of council because there's a lawsuit and the case handed out but that was pulled out of court three months prior. And the executive session could not have been covered by that because the executive session is designed in the legal excuse to restrict information that may cause impact or risk of a legal strategy or negotiation. It's not an excuse of we've done something bad and we want to keep it at closed doors from the public. That's not how an executive session is supposed to be. This all looks like a black eye, so she'll not talk about it and will not address it, and we will sort of address it in fifth order or just refuse. That moves us to our former OEC director, Ms. Andapan. Rocket her up and put in the position because we needed the best of the best. No time to think and look, shove her in, but we'll not talk about the driving with a suspended license. We'll turn and look away when a warrant is filed because of failing to pay court, court costs, and we will 100% not tell the public when she resigns because the person who was in direct control of $60 million resigned because they're about to be charged with, false, uh, with forgery, false statements, and fraudulent stealing, stealing thousands of dollars from public assistance. This is who we trust with our financial, uh, our financial deals. City's response, we have no reason to believe that the alleged misconduct occurred in our official capacity or the city was impacted in any way, financially or otherwise. I guess all of this looks good on the city. Justice is not blind, but City Hall and its ethics is. We need a change, and it's not hiding behind and saying that we can't look at it and we can't operate it. We can't make laws, we can't make legislations, and we can't bring people before this body to get answers for what they do. But it seems that's all we get. Thank you. Anyone else?
So before I even start, anybody want to look back and apologize to Kristen's for your negligence? No? Anybody? Because you all ignored the emails, right? Anybody? Mr. Scott, we've said this several times before. We got the emails. They were turned over to the administration, and the administration is taking care of it. Taking care of what? It takes time. We were told that they're taking care of it. it Council time. did send it over to the administration. Oh. But even though you guys knew about the warrant for Selena, you still put her in charge of housing at the time that the warrant was active, right? You guys voted on it, right? This body did not vote on putting her in that position. It was brought up here at the meetings. There was this, body might have, this body might have voted on a waiver, but this body did not put her in a position. You guys and, didn't and make I, motions for her to move forward onto some board? And I, for voted the city? Against, and I voted against her waiver. What about your friends? Anybody want to take a little bit of accountability? We, we did see it. And we were told there's an investigation. And we're still waiting for the findings. The investigation of what? Of all the compiled emails from not just you and her, but some other, some other people. Well, I was kind enough today to reach out to the OIG office that was doing the investigation that handled Selena's charges today. So I'll pass it along to everybody in the room. If anybody wants to talk, the lady will gladly speak to anybody here that has information because OIG decided to open up their own investigation into Waleski. And the first question they continuously asked was, was the administration aware and was council aware? That's their big questions because you guys all turned a blind eye, so did the administration. You guys sat here telling Mark that Tom Oleski should be the one to investigate Tom Oleski. Does that make any sense to you? That's like asking Nolan in the back to go pull himself over for running a stop sign. Sounds pretty stupid, doesn't it? Does that not sound absolutely dumb? So you're going to have Tom Oleski investigate Tom Oleski's fraudulent business. I'm sure you're going to get great results out of that, right? Please. Yeah. And then the text message, everybody's aware of that. Did anybody see that text message previously? Did anybody see that text previously? There's four of you. Can anybody answer? You didn't see it, Schuster? I think I saw it. No? Hold on, let me pull up the email I sent you. I could pull up the text messages where you asked me to put it in an email, too. So now do you want to say you didn't see it? I don't recall seeing it. Well, then you're you ignoring it. sent countless things over many emails, many texts. So I, there's a lot of stuff there. A lot it's of been texts. turned over to the administration. But you just said you didn't see it. You asked me specifically I, I in text it. to put that in an email to you directly. OK. Don't recall it. You're just as good as Smurl smir at this. I, I guess I am. You've sent many things. Because there's many problems, but you guys ignore many problems. Is that not correct? Like, you're keeping a guy in a position that you know he's violating public trust, so you keep him in a position of public trust. You had Selena in a position of public trust, where every time that something was presented by anybody, Everybody vouched, she's a great person. She's an asset to the city. With what, getting arrested? Which arrest do we want to count? The first, the second, or the third arrest before we say that she's probably not a good fit? But we saved 15 bucks on the background check at least, right? That's a positive. Because that was, what, two weeks ago? First That's of all, it's 1,500, and I've been pushing for background checks for four years. Well, you are, but I mean, we're a little late in the game now, aren't we? Well, I mean, we promoted her with charges and a suspended license. We ignored Virgil's constant OOR requests asking for a list of city drivers or city vehicles while one was parked at her house for a while. And it was ignored because the city didn't want to say, yeah, we gave somebody with a suspended driver's license a vehicle. I mean, all you're doing in that position is, I don't know, whoever gave her keys to a car that the city operates, you're nothing but putting the city liable for the damage she was, could possibly do. We, we inquired if she was driving a city vehicle. We were told no. Yeah, your, your city officials seem very honest, so I would take their word for it instead well, of looking I'm into it. I'm just telling you what we were told. Yeah. 
We That's like want. asking a three-year-old if they colored on the wall. No? Crickets again. Anyone else? Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, taxpayer resident. Uh, okay, uh, over many weeks, the pothole patch here has been mentioned, and what I know about it is this. We bought a pothole patch here. It seemed to work. I never seen it in person, but um, whoever we shared it with left either left it go to waste with concrete inside or, or something. And it was sat down the sewer plant for years and uh, whatever happened to it is beyond me. But if we ever go into pothole patching again, we sure could use it, but uh, don't lend it out to anybody. Don't share it with anybody. Let them buy their own, you know. The town has one of our fire engines and they get free, free trash removal and there are hardly any taxes. And uh, about two weeks ago, somebody was here about affordable housing. Well, how do we have affordable housing when we put up a $20 million building, not in Scranton, it was the Slipco, the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, and it gets tax-free for 10 years, and on the 11th year, they decide they don't need it, and it gets torn down. You know, how much could $20 million, how many affordable houses could that have built? And uh, with code enforcement, be careful with both issues. Uh, I got into one heck of an argument with somebody over uh, that quality of life business and I never felt that it was a good idea to really rabble about mayor, uh, neighbors and people like that. You, you create hard feelings and maybe uh, the person is just somebody trying to get by. If they're totally attached to the last five cars they own parked in their yard, yeah, so be it. You know, get them out of there. Um, there was an article a few days ago in a paper. Pre-denial for Lechate permit jeopardizes plans. Here we go again. Uh, now, hopefully, you people will stop on the way home and pick up a couple gallons each of proverbial gasoline, proverbial, and dump it on this. Because we don't need lechate going into the, the, the falls at Neog is on the national landmark. And it's listed on a national landmark. And here, these guys want to turn it into a sewer. I've had enough of this business. It's like our, our interests don't mean a hill of beans compared to their concerns for earning money. And oh, by the way, uh, you can keep paying a $120 a month sewer bill for two old crows that live in this house and don't use much water. You know, it's like uh, really beyond, uh, beyond comprehension. I'll take some of the stuff I heard with a grain of salt. There may be personnel problems there. And I mean, the point being, if you holler about blight, then the people are gonna, every little thing, the people that are enforcing the blight code, oh, get under pressure to enforce it. And they may not be fair. And 
Then you have another problem where somebody's getting booted out of their house. I went to the doctor's office yesterday. He gave me a pile of uh, samples that were worth 22 bucks a pill. And there's uh, condemned stickers all over his office up on Mulberry Street. So he didn't ask me to mention this. Um, and finally, don't rag about the flag. Ask Congress to pass Ukraine aid and call outside to other U.S. reps. Uh, it's ridiculous. That was due four months ago and 30 years ago, they had to turn over their land-based nuclear forces to Russia and we agreed to give them help if they needed it. Thank you and have a good night. Anyone else? Marie Schumacher, resident and taxpayer. Uh, I'm going to skip anything tonight other than the fact to con say that I believe that you're going to need a very big broom. I'm not sure they can even make one big enough to clean this mess up and get back on doing some things for the people. But one thing that was done, oh well, <coughs> I will ask. Did anybody uh, try to find out how they are addressing the stormwater with a, at the new University of Scranton building? I guess not. Okay, what I do want to say is about a year or so ago, my uh, young friend came with me and asked that something be done with the divider on the Spruce Street Bridge because there had been accidents. And finally, I was downtown this morning and I went across the bridge and lo and behold, the State Department of Transportation was there. They have painted quite a bit with a bright yellow and they put reflectors on it a lot of reflectors. So uh, when I picked him up from school today, I took him down to show him and he was very happy. And uh, so should all the people who are using that road. So some things can get done, but unfortunately it was done by calls from outside of this group. So wait and hear what you're going to have next. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, Council. Lynn Lebrowski, lifelong city resident, homeowner, small business owner. Um, I wanted to first mention some great news. A group of volunteers gathered together over the weekend and they worked really hard and they did clean up part of the Heritage Trail, which was long overdue. Um, this, this group of volunteers came out in the pouring, freezing rain on Saturday, the freezing wind on Sunday, and none of them were afraid to get their hands dirty. It was very inspirational. Um, in that group, I don't want to mention names because nobody wanted recognition, which is great. There were two elected city officials um, that showed up, one elected city official that donated, uh, but couldn't be there. Uh, there was a Scranton school board member that showed up, and there was also an attorney from the DA's office that showed up. Uh, there was a nice woman by the name of Trisha Doherty. She lives in Tripps Park. Very nice woman. She likes to walk the trail with her mom. Uh, maybe uh, Mayor Cagnetti could knock on her door and tell her thank you, because she's one of her neighbors. Um, also, there was a West Side High School honor student. He's a minor, so I won't mention his name, although I'd love to. And he's a future University of Scranton student who was earning his community service that day, so really did work out. In spite of the weather, we, we, like I said, we got a lot done. We received a lot of donations for this project. Um, Mr. Lewis de Naples was kind enough to donate a 40-yard dumpster, including delivery and pickup. Depending on the weight, 
probably a $1,500 value that we saved the city. Um, Renee from Scranton Napa store donated work gloves. Uh, LJC janitorial distributors on Cedar Avenue in South Scranton donated uh, 200 trash bags and four boxes of rubber gloves valued at probably about $200. Uh, Bruce, a local ambulance driver, donated two large sharps containers. Um, Joe from Pika HVAC on Pittston Avenue in South Scranton came by and donated gloves. Uh, Lowe's in Dixon City donated $300 worth of shovels, rakes, and gloves. Angela from Walmart donated a $50 gift card, which was used to buy additional rakes and water. Um, I reached out to a local counseling center in our neighborhood and they were kind enough to send out a mass email to get some people to participate. Um, so that being said, I'd like to set the record straight. Um, that day there were no complaints, no agendas, and no politics. Everybody got along, everybody worked together, and we did that for a purpose. Our purpose was not to harm anyone or be uncompassionate. We were there to clean up garbage. That's exactly what we did. Um, I don't think we took any belongings from anyone that was homeless because the items we picked up were frozen clothing and just garbage. It, it didn't belong to anybody. As a matter of fact, my husband, when he was helping up in the wooded area, um, he uh, met a guy that sat up and, and he laid back down and then 20 minutes later he sat up again and he cleaned up his spot and he was kind enough to drag a blanket down and throw it on the, on the trailer. So he actually helped. Um, so, where do I go with this because I have a minute and a half. Um, I took time out of my day today and I run a small business so that's not easy to do, um, to pay the meter and come to a mingle with the mayor at four o'clock. Uh, I don't think we really mingled though. Um, when I invite somebody to my house, I open the door, I greet them, I offer them a drink, maybe something to eat, I don't know. Um, but she wasn't at the door. Um, she did eventually make a debut and when I presented my concerns to her, she said that I was rude to her when I seen her in her neighborhood which I don't think I was, but okay, if I was, I apologize. And uh, she rolled her eyes at me and then walked away. She was done with me. So way to lead by example. You're calling me rude while you're being rude. That's just my opinion. Um, I have a lot more to say. I'm probably gonna run out of time and I'm gonna have my husband come up here and speak about something else because I didn't get to do it. But if we add all that stuff together, we really did save the city a lot of money. We made the trail look prettier and I actually think the homeless people appreciated that. We need to give these people a purpose. We need to find solutions. And nobody went there with any agenda but to just clean up and do their part. And, and I thought it was really fantastic. So. I don't know, there's going to be more cleanups to come in the future, so I hope more people get involved. And uh, we need some leadership in this city. Somebody has to stand up or step aside. Thank you. Anyone else? Jeff Labroski, city uh, owner property owner, business owner. I tried to yield my time to my wife, but apparently you can't do that here. So um, the Little League up on behind Burger King there, I believe it's South 8th Street. Um, they're in the need of a defibrillator. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I tried my best. Um, there is a uh, person that we deal with through Napa, and they have a um, memorial set up. It's called the Joshua Tippett Big Heart Memorial. If anybody would like to donate to a defibrillator to that cause, I'm sure you could do it through the Little League, but also she would be able to take donations too. Um, so if anybody could help, anybody in the city. These kids, they're playing baseball out there. What if one of them, God forbid, has a problem? We need that there for them. And when my wife asked the mayor, you know what the lady said from OECD? I believe she said, you could quote me, Lynn. What did she say to you from OECD today when you said that the Little League needed help with that so defibrillator? They manage their own fields. They manage their own fields, and there was uh, what? No funding for them, or was there no, funding? It's up to 
Well, that funding's probably in their pocket, but whatever. Um, so we also had a problem with uh, Tom Oleski, too. Since I'm up here, I might as well just get it out. Uh, we had a lot of problems. We had a place behind us that was trying to start a junkyard. We called down the city. We were told that we were conspiracy theorists. We were, um, when we asked uh, mayor, the mayor's office, the guy that was answering the phone at, at that time was Chris, and he said, we. So my wife said, well, who's we? And you know what his answer was? The royal we. Do you get people think, not you, but does she think she's really royal? Because she works for us. We pay you guys to come here and do what you're doing. And I asked the city guy that was helping us out, and I don't want to mention his name, but he'll know who I mean. I said to him, thank you for coming and helping us on this heritage trail. You know what that man said to me? He said, thank you, but it's my job. That's what the rest of you need to do. Anyone else? My name's Rick Little. Uh, I lived 14 years at Scranton Housing Authority. I was recently evicted on the 5th of uh, what it, February. Uh, I've uh, got a lot of information about the, the homeless situation. It, it, uh, when I first got homeless, I couldn't get any information because I couldn't get my mail. And, you know, I, I, I couldn't get a lot of things because I didn't have my license. I had to renew my license. I had to uh, save my film, move stuff to Dunmore in a storage space. I had to rent a truck I hadn't driven in 20 years. And I just got exhausted. So I'm not thinking about where I'm going to go. And I'm done. And I, uh, uh, I remember the attorney here saying that, that my landlord's building is owned by HUD. And I've been asking this for years and years. I went today and I said, can you, I said to Sean, you know, can, can, can you tell me where I can get that in writing? And he, he goes, uh, tax assessor. So I went to the tax assessor. I got the tax assessment of who owns uh, Scranton Housing Authority. And it is the, the um, January 1st, 1900 deed. Uh, now, the, 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 and then there's other deeds. It was reorganized in many, many times, 76. The main time it was reorganized was March 6th, 1996, when they made my lease that they, they evicted me for lease violations. Now this is, I'd just like to explain about how judicial, how this is the biggest abuse that could ever happen, and it's coming from the district attorney's office who runs Scranton Housing Authority. They have a, first off, they say they're HUD because they want people scared, scared that they're going to be evicted. There's hundreds of signs over the years, you know, do this, you're going to be evicted, do this, you're going to be evicted, do this, you're going to have to pay the court fees. The court, it, I, I've discovered, it, it, it's a business in itself, and everybody who runs SHA, most of them are judges or lawyers. They have so many, and so when they do take me to court, they got the finest lawyers in the area. The same lawyers, uh, uh, Scanlon, Hanley, and Doherty, who, who, do, who defend the Scranton School Union. They have millions of dollars. Where's the money go? And I found out where the money goes. Uh, and I've also found out about the homeless situation. There's nothing for me, because I'm over 65. There, I mean, uh, there is the, the, the Andrews Homeless Shelter, and I, I certainly did there, and it, it's, it's crazy all, all the papers they made me get. They made me go to my storage area and get my original license, because that was, you know, it, it's like, go out and get this paper, this paper. And that's the nature of the whole city with all the 5013 Cs. You go to area on aging, and, you know, it, here's your job. Go out and get this paper, this paper, this paper. You, you got to go to Social Security and get, get a printout. Well, I, the, the most absurd thing I got, and I, I showed this to Paige Cagnetti, you know, because she's telling me about, you know, there's the CIC, 
which is where everybody's complaining about all the homeless people being. But that's not all the homeless people, I'll tell you that. And then there's another, uh, uh, the, the uh, St. Anthony's Haven. And, you know, they got 20 beds. It's in the basement. It's a big building, 600 Wyoming Avenue. But what's crazy to me is how this town was built. It was built by Presbyterians and, and uh, Methodists. And I, I, I look at this original um, uh, owner history of SHA, and they don't, they, they don't even write, you know, they don't even write, you know, the address. They had addresses then. They, they made all the streets up in 1886, I believe. And, you know, they say Vine and Vine and Adams. And, and then, you know, there's all kinds of things in here, uh, you know, for total, total taxable value, for land and building. And all day I'm going around the globe building. But the, the key thing is, is when they cut my rent, when they cut my Social Security off in New York State, and I heard about this ERAP, and I could not find anybody in Lackawanna County. Finally, from, from, I found out it's at Catholic Services down there by the veterans thing on uh, Penn Avenue. So I applied for it. And then later on, I have to apply for it again at Agency on Aging. And they farmed out their um, application thing to a private company called Capital in Philadelphia. So I applied for this thing four times. And I go in front of Judge Moyle, all the money's gone. When I'm court watching Judge Moyle, every case was SHA and talking about ERAP money. We're talking about ERAP money, whether we're talking about the Affordable Rent Act. I mean, David Coyne, the first thing he said, Mr. Little got his stimulus check. That's not true. They know exactly how much money I get from my bank account because I sign a thing. Thank you, Mr. Little. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> You know, five minutes is never enough. I know. And, uh, you know, if, if you would expand it, the people watching this would know what's going on because Thank no you. one knows what's going on. Thank you. Good evening, Council, Mike Mancini, Scranton. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Kristen Chiswick for coming out here tonight, being brave, and speaking out against this administration and their wrongdoings and the way that they treat people who truly care. You know, with any type of business or anything that you do in life, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. We need more em employees like Kristen Chiswick. I understand that this body really can't say much because of the ongoing investigation, much like Marty Flynn's mother. Same demographic applies. We have a mayor from out of town who chooses to use the city of Scranton as a stepping stone towards Harrisburg or Washington. Neither is going to happen. Look at these roads I mentioned last week. Your ordinances are in place. What we need to do is we need to push those ordinances as far as the utility companies and how they progress with cutting our, our pay hole cuts. They back up a truck or they pack it down with a shovel. It's not good enough for me. It's not good enough for the citizens of the city of Scranton. I don't think it should be good enough for you. Six. That's the number of times that I actually had a, a possible encounter with our mayor. Since my son's passing, I started the Nevea Project, and it's to look into education prevention and awareness to our opioid crisis. This mayor is putting lives at risk, or police officers at risk. I'm requesting that this council send a letter to the mayor asking her to request three additional canines for our police department. We only have two. There's 168 hours in the week. Our police officers are 
taxed to the limit as far as the number of hours that they, they put in. Being short certainly doesn't help the situation. So six was the number of times that this mayor and I had the opportunity to talk. She chose to say nothing, nothing as far as my son's passing, nothing as far as sorry for your loss. Seventh interaction was today. As opposed to uh, saying sorry for your loss, what she did was, Mr. Mancini, I see you have some monster bottles in your hands. Well, my reply was simple. Needed to be jacked up for tonight, because in a matter of five minutes, there's going to be a heck of a lot to say. Tom Oleski, we're on the letter S. If you don't want to be page one, I suggest you shut yourself down, because the EPA and the DEP are on their way. You're, uh, you have an illegal business, and uh, like I said, if you want to be next on page one, keep it open. I suggest you shut it down. Now, as far as, uh, as, far as uh, this administration goes, there's not a lot to talk about uh, in the ways and means of our future. You know, it's unfortunate that we're getting all of these calls, these police calls, um, code reds, things like that. My son, since my son's passing the day after his birthday on May 20th, I, uh, it's really affected me. Uh, not somebody, uh, an 11 year old, not too far from where I reside, overdosed not too long ago. These canines are very important, okay? Um, we need to uh, uh, protect our citizens, and next May 20th is the primary. That's when she's up for re-election. At this point, we need to do better. We truly do. We need to bring our communities together. We need to work on our neighborhood watch programs. We need to get to know our neighbors better. I've given this mayor an opportunity to speak with me tonight, and she chose not to do so. Snide remark, arrogance at its finest. Well, guess what, Paige Cognetti? Come next May 20th, you're gonna be uh, out of office. And that conversation you and I have, it may be at the University of Scranton, there may be other people at the table, but I assure you, there will be another suit. The city belongs to the people. We could do better, and we will do better. Thank you, Council. Oh, and by the way, Mikey, I'm going to leave these downstairs for you. You can grab them when you come into the office tomorrow. Anyone else? No one else? Fifth order, 5A motions. <clears throat> Mr. King, do you have any motions or comments? Um, just a few. <clears throat> I would like to uh, request, I know that you have a weekly meeting, uh, Mr. Smurl, with the mayor. If you could discuss uh, the request for the additional canines, I think that's something that is greatly needed um, in our city and see uh, if we can find some funding to try to look into purchasing and training, you know, some additional canines and, and officers to work with them. If you could do that. I will. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as indicated earlier uh, by Mr. Schuster, um, we obtained the interest rate for the refinancing of the bond, which is 3.27%, which is um, extremely favorable in this market, so uh, that's a good thing for the city. Um, I'd also like to request um, Mr. Voldenberg, if you can ask the administration if they could put an updated paving list um, on the website so that the citizens know or, uh, exactly. <clears throat> and I'd like to see it broken down, almost like in a spreadsheet that just indicates which streets, the blocks that are being paved, like. 800 to 1200 or what have you um, so that the citizens um, will know whether or not their street is, is getting paved 
this spring. I know that sometimes that list moves a little bit because of UGI projects or Pennsylvania American Water projects, but um, I'd really appreciate if we can get that list updated. Um, I will, Mr. King. <clears throat> also, um, we did get an update on the street signs, uh, Norma. Um, apparently, we received three hundred thirty-five thousand um, dollars in a grant recently, and I believe that um, that work is going to be outsourced, and they're going to be moving forward with it um, to continue to get more street signs in the city, which <clears throat> has been a work in progress over many, many years, and you know we'll stay on it and continue to to ask them to continue updating that. Um, I attended a meeting last night at Robinson Park. Um, the members from the Deutsch Institute were there. Um, they've been doing, the Deutsch Institute had, um, they had gotten a, a, a quite a number of grants to update that building up there, and a lot of work had been done, but still the roof, apparently they still have a leak up, up there. So. Um, they're working on that. They're going to have a fundraiser, the Deutsch Institute, on April 19th at Waldorf Park. And as I gain um, more information on that, uh, I'll let everyone know. But um, Scott Gassenmeyer was there last night, and <clears throat> he gave an update about all the work that's going to go on at Robinson Park. It's, it's going to be all ex uh, handicapped. It's handicapped accessible. Um, most of the equipment for the playground has been purchased. It's been delivered. Um, the, the work is out for bid right now. Um, we expect shovels in the ground by probably um, mid to late, no, probably late April, early May. And we're hoping that project, uh, for the most part, will get completed um, by the fall of uh, 2024. Um, furthermore, I had the opportunity to go by and see the updates that um, occurred over at the Oakmont Park and that looks fantastic. It's very close to being finished. Um, they just kind of have to <clears throat> finish some of the walkways that go around it, but all the playground equipment over there has been updated and the basketball court, so uh, we're looking forward to that being completed. <clears throat> I, I think it's also important to note that while sometimes it seems like we're uh, complicit or we don't respond, anytime that uh, personnel issues are mentioned, it, it's important to note that um, that doesn't mean that things aren't happening or things are not being looked into, but typically um, we don't comment on personnel issues, but it doesn't mean that things aren't happening in reference to those issues. So I think that's important to note. Also, just uh, <clears throat> I got some responses on some questions that I had asked last week. Um, The audit. The city is currently providing uh, the requested documents to CLA. CLA will perform, perform the preliminary testing uh, in April, followed by field work this summer. The target for completion of the 2023 audit is August 31st, uh, 2024. Um, also, a, a request for a resident. <clears throat> the city. Uh, if we could review and address a deteriorating condition and graffiti on the lookout on 307, and I believe that was Marie Schumacher. Um, the response I give is the Parks Department has been and will continue cleaning the lookout almost daily for the trash and debris left there. This is a daily concern of the department. Uh, they're also planning a cleanup below the lookup, lookout once the weather breaks to trim vegetation and clear large amount of dumped garbage. That area is currently difficult to access, so uh, clearing a safe path for year-round cleaning and upkeep will be one of their tasks. They're also going to address the graffiti with the use of pressure washing and graffiti remover. Uh, age is also a factor in the removal of different graffiti markings. The longer it's been there, the more difficult it is to remove. And finally, they plan to begin more, uh, mortaring and replacing the rocks that have been dislodged and damaged. And that's all I have at this time. Thank you, Mr. King. Mr. Schuster, do you have any motions or comments? Yes, I have a few. Um, I was able to attend the zoning board, uh, last zoning board meeting, and I had some observations that I, uh, 
I witnessed while I was there. Um, a lot of the applications that they're getting on the zoning board seem to be subpar or not completed. So I don't, I don't know why the uh, city zoning officer is accepting these. Um, another thing that was mentioned at the meeting was that neighbors, when a variance or some kind of issue occurs, neighbors are informed about it. Um, from the meeting, it was neighbors within 200 feet. The city zoning officer did state that he sent out letters to homes and residents that were affected within 200 feet, yet none of the, letter, none of the residents received any of these letters. So um, Mr. Voldemort, if we could just ask, um, them to contact the zoning officer and see how many letters went out and what is the usual process when a variance that affects a neighborhood is um, is occurring that the neighbors could speak their mind at a at a zoning board meeting. I'll get those specifics. Thank you. Um, we have a garbage update for Easter. Um, the DPW will be picking up trash and recyclables on Good Friday, March 30th. The DPW is working Good Friday, but they do have Easter Monday the first off. So, So they will, be, they will be picking up garbage on Friday, although the date is wrong, but they do have uh, Easter Monday off, so there's gonna be no trash pickup on Monday the 1st, but they will be picking up on Friday. Um, we did have a, a resident ask about the Engine 15 building on Ash Street, so to give an update, um, we asked if there are plans to advertise and possibly sell Engine 15 on Ash Street, and the administration responded um, to, uh, there's been no new progress on plans for the Agent 15 building on Ash Street since they last spoke about it on March 4th. Um, the animal control officers are utilizing the former Ash Street fire station at this time while space at the Serenity Center is being completed. We have gotten an appraisal for the Ash Street property and will continue to take st steps towards a possible sale. So they got an appraisal. They might be looking at a sale, but that's as far as we know at this point in time. Um, one last thing, um, Mr. Voldemort, I think I know the answer. We, we asked for a caucus on the Sorrenti Center to get some updates. Do we ever get a date on that? Or we don't have a date as yet, but they did agree to come in and speak. All right, all right. thank you very much. That's all, Mr. Smurl. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Mr. McAndrew, do you have any motions or comments? I have a few. So <clears throat> I got some responses, some inquiries that, that um, and requests for information over the past couple weeks. So the ANZ Hotel property on 300 Meadow Avenue um, has been having a lot of suspicious, suspicious behavior reported to me by residents, concerned residents, and valid concerns. So um, in addition to all the inspections that I, I was asked about, because there was a change of hands of ownership, so there was a health inspection completed. I can report that out. There was a fire inspection completed and passed. I can report that out. <clears throat> In addition to that, but you know, the main concern was the suspicious behavior and how this falls into the nuisance ordinance. Um, that wasn't clearly explained, to, or, or I didn't get a clear answer on that. So what I did get was the 300 block of Meadow Avenue is a highly traveled thoroughfare due to its proximity to 81. We, we understand that, and, and that's why there's, it's easy on, easy off for all of these um, un, uh, actors, bad actors that you know, are having problems there that we want to take care of. Through a combination of proactive police patrols of properties in the vicinity and responses to service calls, the Scranton Police Department has recorded 87 incidents at the 300 Meadow Avenue from January 2nd of 2023 until March 16th of 2024, this month. An average of less than six incidents per month. Of those incidents, the and during the same time frame, the SPD has investigated 30 cases and have ultimately led to 19 arrests. So thank you to our brave police department and, and their great work. But my question still remains, uh, Mr. Voldenberg. So could you please um, inquire again, how does this property, with the amount of calls, with the amount of arrest, um, how does this fall in with the nuisance ordinance where you know, I know this criteria that have to be met and to see what, what, what else can be done with this facility in regards to that. So please check on that for- I will, sir. On behalf of the, the, the residents. And again, thank you, uh, Scranton's Finest, for taking care of the, that one. So last week, uh, Mr. Boldenberg, I expressed concerns brought to me by residents of that big hole 
at the top of West Side Hill. Um, has it been determined whose hole it is? Is it the water company? Is it the city's? Is it the owner's? But it's, but it's a huge safety issue. So I don't think we got a response yet. Did you? We did not. Could you please follow? I'm sorry. Could you please follow up with that? I will, Thank Mr. McCann. Thank you. Um, so in addition to that nuisance property, since I'm talking about nuisance property or potentially nuisance, nuisance property, there is a property on 125-127 South Francis Cabrini Avenue I've been bringing up for years. Um, and I know that every time we, we've gotten two responses recently that the, the code enforcement to the police department are looking at this. But as we're sitting here tonight, I get a picture sent to me that the police are there again as we speak. And I forgot to tell you the other day I got a couple um, uh, pictures or texts at this same property. There's kids running around with machetes. So this, this is definitely a nuisance property. I think it's, it's getting worse than better. Also, could we please ask for an update? I, I know there might be a, there's an investigation, that's fine. But, um, I, you know, they don't need to disclose that to us. But just an update, because, you know, the concerned residents are really getting scared over there. You know with a machete running around. I, I know I would be. Um, street signs, okay, so we get $300,000 grant, that's great. What does $300,000 grant cover? How many signs? I know since we're subbing it out, can we get a breakdown of what $300,000 buys us for this year? I will. Is it 100 signs, is it, is it 100 streets? I don't know, so I think we'd all like to know what that equates to because um, Last year's grant wasn't enough. We definitely know that, so. Um, let's see here. Mr. Mancini brought up paving. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring it up too. So, Mr. Uh, Derek Raines, who comes here all the time, lovely gentleman who's disabled and struggles on his street for years, for not for, for many years, um, issues with his street not being paved and, and, and issues at the corner, issues in front of his house where he can't even get a van in there to pick him up to go to therapy because of the situation of the road. Last year it was supposed to be paved, then all of a sudden it was off the list, which is horrible. So, but in recent communications we, I've seen um, that something might happen. So Mr. Raines reached out to me again today and um, I want to um, reach out to you, Mr. Voldemort, because I know there's been some communication. I know that the water company who's responsible for paving it said, okay, it's on for 2025, wait a second. Now maybe we can find some funding and get it done this spring. That's I don't correct. want to give this guy false hope, we do it every year, and it's not fair to him, but the last, has there any other correspondence been had since that email? from a couple weeks ago. No correspondence, but the mayor has spoken also directly with Mr. Ozolinski, the senior superintendent for the water company. Okay. And she stressed the importance of the project and he's going to get back to all of us. All right, so as soon as he gets back to you, me, whoever, um, if it's you first, could you please relay this to Mr. Raines? I will. Thank you. Um, the canine units, okay, I'm, as chairman of public safety, I agree with Mr. Mancini and, and uh, Mr. King. Um, I know we have two canines. I witness one maybe twice a week at our, the Career Technology Center. It's a wonderful resource. This dog is fantastic. Um, he has a skill set. But I know there's different dogs with different skill sets or training. So um, I too agree that we, that we you know, send a message to the mayor, inquire that they can explore See, see what it takes to add three more canines uh, to help protect not only the community, but our, our uh, bra very brave police officers. Uh, let me see, is that it? I hope it's it, let's see. I don't wanna miss anything. Oh, I think that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McAndrew. Um, last week, the unit block of South Webster Avenue, Forward Jacobson Hat Warehouse, um, I believe it was turned into a, a residential supply company. The zoning board has been there and the police department have been there and it is currently under investigation um, and I believe they closed it on Monday. The 600 block of Donnelly Court, code enforcement notified of the garbage and trash there. <clears throat> 614 Willow Street, um, again, trash, appliances, garbage. Uh, they were issued a citation March 13th, and they will follow up again this week. 
uh, Cedar Avenue and Hickory Street. Uh, we submitted a request, a request to Scranton Police Department for review and replacement of a security camera on the southeast pole of the intersection. There used to be one there, it is now missing. Cedar Avenue and Palm Street uh, sent another request in for code enforcement for trash and garbage. And um, I don't remember last week, somebody asked for um, a, a recycling events. The city right now, there will be no electronic recycling events due to grant funding. Scranton received this grant in 2022, and we're not el eligible again until or 2025. However, there is a tire recycling event happening again this year and will take place the last week of September into the first week of October. Along with the tire recycling event, there will be a household hazardous waste event at PNC Field on November 16th of 2024. That is all, Mr. Wolfenberg. 5B, no business at this time. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, filed a council number 15, 2024, an ordinance ratifying the confirmatory deed of property situate at 2811 North Main Avenue in Scranton, PA 18508, transferring the property to the city of Scranton from the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. You have heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move to that item, item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On to question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. So moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, filed a council number 14, 2024, converting a certain portion of the 600 block of Deacon Street from a one-way street to a two-way street, from 625, 628 Deacon Street to its intersection with Sanderson Avenue. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. On the question, uh, I'd like to propose that we, uh, we table 7A uh, because we have put a request and have a study done. We had at least four or five citizens here last week requesting that um, a four-way stop sign be put in there. There's presently two stop signs. Um, so I don't think anyone's against the legislation, um, but what we're hoping is that this traffic study would indicate that possibly four stop signs would be put in at the corner of Sanderson and Deacon. So I'd like to table this until that study is done um, so we can determine whether uh, or not, you know, they're going to require or they're going to recommend four stop signs. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to table item 7A. All in favor? Well, on the question. Uh, on the question? On the question, I agree. We listen to the residents. Um, their needs are, are few. There's already going to be two stop signs. I think adding two more will provide just more safety. So um, I agree. That's why we t I'm, I'm agreed to table this until we get the information uh, and, and, and uh, the findings from the study being done. Yes, also on the question, I think we're all in agreement with this. Um, I, I think getting that um, traffic study back would have all of our ducks in a row before we make the decision to, to move it to a two-way. Every, everything would be put in place before we uh, moved in that direction, you know, in terms of public safety. So I'm in agreement as well, the table. Thank you. All those in favor to table item 7A, signify by saying aye. 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 I, I, Opposed? I think that we need to do a roll call vote when it's in seventh order. Um, okay. Maybe I'm incorrect. We'll do the roll call? Yeah, we could. We'll do roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? This is a vote table, correct? To yes. Tomorrow. Yes. Table. Yes, the table. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Smurl? Yes. We have, uh, so item 7A is table. Table, yes. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 25, 2024, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate City officials for the City of Scranton to execute and enter into an agreement between the United States Department of Army Corps Engineers and the City of Scranton, Pennsylvania, for an accelerated levy system evaluation pursuant to the National Flood Insurance Program. 
As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Smurl? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. Eighth order, no business at this time. If there is no further business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.